In this video, I'm going to answer the question, how important is math in relation to becoming a programmer? For those of you who are teaching yourselves or going back to school, I know there's a lot of you who are contemplating maybe adding extra courses in math in certain areas or even buying Udemy courses specifically related to math because you've heard that in programming, math is very important. So I want to give you a definitive answer so that you know exactly how to handle this. So if you're creating your own path, if you're self-taught, or even if you're going back to school, you can know whether you have to take extra courses or whether you have to shore up that knowledge. So let's get right into it. All right, so how important is math in relation to becoming a programmer? So if you're looking to become a web developer, I can tell you that you just need basic math skills. Now math is a big subject, so let's be pretty clear about this because there could be some room for interpretation there. When I say basic math, what I'm talking about is basic arithmetic. So as simple as it sounds, I'm talking about addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, right? That's a start. Also negative numbers, do you know how those work? Do you know how to round? Do you understand fractions and the decimal system? Do you know how exponentiation works or exponents or logarithms, right? So if you guys remember back in the day, also when you were using a graphing calculator and you plotted numbers in a table and that created a graph like this for exponents and like this for logarithms, if you even have sort of a faint memory of learning that in school, that could be enough for you to be a web developer because as long as you could go back and Google a lot of these concepts I talked about, that could be sufficient. So that's good news. That should be good news for a lot of you guys who are looking to just get your foot in the door in this field by becoming a web developer, maybe eventually going somewhere else from there. And to kind of give you guys uh, some insight into previous times that I have used math in my career, I've used it for a lot of different things. The most common thing I can think of is data and reporting data, right? So when I was working on an application, we had a bunch of data that needed to come back for reports. So what I had to do on the server, I had to aggregate data, I had to find the averages of data and then display that, right? So I had to work with a lot of different math to do that. And it's a little bit hard because I'm not that good at math. It's been a long time since I've been really into math, but that was a good example of when I had to do it. I've also created a lot of games, right? So Snake App, I've created a Tetris game as well. And there's a lot of different math concepts in there. Like for example, when the snake is moving across the page, it's moving, it's based on XY coordinates, which is the Cartesian coordinate system that I mentioned earlier. Also too, like randomly placing the apple on a page, that requires a little bit of math as well, just as a small example. Now I should mention here that there are other aspects of programming that will require more than basic arithmetic, right? So I said web development doesn't. So that's front end, full stack, back end development, anything like that doesn't typically require an advanced level of math. But there are other areas of programming that may or may require a little bit more advanced than just basic arithmetic. So just some things come to mind here. If you're looking to get into cryptography or blockchain development, maybe you're looking to get into machine learning or artificial intelligence that will definitely require a different set of math skills. Maybe you're looking to get into game development or 3D rendering or something like that. That will also require a different set of math skills specific to wherever you're trying to go. So that is something you do need to take into consideration. All right, so the last thing I really wanna cover is how much time should you spend learning math right now? So like I said, if you're looking to get into an entry level position, especially as a web developer, chances are good you just need to refresh on some of the basic concepts. That could take you a day, that could take you a couple days, or you could just leave it to Google whenever you come across it. However, for those of you who do struggle with basic arithmetic and whatever, you know, it is what it is, maybe you do need to take some basic arithmetic courses, you'll have to be the judge of that. Now there is another situation where you may wanna have stronger math skills when you go into it. That's if you want to go above an entry level position and go to like a mid-level position, right? Or maybe you wanna work for one of the big tech companies, one of the FANG companies. A big part of working for a FANG company or maybe even the mid-level is that you will be exposed to data structures and algorithms as part of the interview process. Part of learning data structures and algorithms is being able to analyze the effectiveness of code or some code you wrote or what's called an algorithm. And a big part of that is big O notation. And to understand big O notation, you really have to understand exponents and logarithms and the Cartesian coordinate system, which I mentioned before, as part of a prerequisite to understanding big O notation. So you may want to shore up on some of that, but I would also recommend when you do start learning data structures and algorithms, 
make sure to pick resources that are helpful at your level. So I know a really popular book is Cracking the Coding Interview book. A lot of people get that when they don't really have strong math skills, right? And they kind of get overwhelmed by it. I would say if you kind of know that right now, just your math skills are not strong, I would actually recommend a book called A Common Sense Guide to Data Structures and Algorithms. It's a book I've recommended before. I find this book is a lot better for people who kind of need to be baby step through it. And to, again, what I said before, right? Like Google some of the concepts that we learned in school, but just kind of forgot like exponents, for example. That's the type of book that you really want to have. So I hope I answered your questions about how important math is in relation to becoming a programmer. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. Also leave a comment too. I'd love to hear how this video helped you guys to have a better understanding of how to craft your own plan or even if you're going to school as well. By the way, guys, for those of you who are interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one to change your career to become a self-taught programmer, I have a paid mentorship program that if you're interested in joining, I would recommend booking a free career strategy session during that career strategy session, our goal is to get a lot of clarity about what you're going through. So I'm going to ask you about your goals specifically, what you're trying to do, and also dive into some of the issues and struggles that you have. And if I can see that the mentorship program is a great fit for you, I'll definitely lay out what it would look like as it is an individual program tailored to you. So if you are interested in booking that career strategy session, I will leave a link in the description below. You can go ahead and book it that way. Um, slots do go up, so I'd recommend jumping on that as soon as possible. But uh, other than that, that's really all I have for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, peace out, guys.